All right, these are right off your handout. You've got three very similar looking equations. These are all ways of calculating either delta G of a reaction, delta H of a reaction, or delta S of a reaction. Notice these are all very similar, but which one is not like the others? Mm. Delta S. So why delta S? It's not That's the difference in the equations. Notice there's no F. What does that F actually stand for? Formation. So in this case, it's you add up all the delta G's of formation of the products and add up all the delta G's of formation of the reactants, and then you do products minus reactants. You do the same thing for delta H. We use these special formation reactions. But for delta S, we typically don't use those formation reactions because we don't need to. So let's say I told you that uh, I used to be a little bigger than I am now, and then I went on a diet. I went on the Adkins diet, and I lost 100 pounds. And then I got off the Adkins diet and I gained 60 pounds. And then I went on the South Beach diet and I lost 120 pounds. And then I got off the South Beach diet and I gained back another 80 pounds. And then I went on the Oprah diet and I gained 40 pounds. <laughs> so, and then that's where I am now. How much do I weigh now then? Why do you have no idea? I never told you where I started at. I never gave you any of my actual weights along the way. I just gave you changes every stage. That's not enough. Unless you have a reference of where I started or at least some part along the way, then you have no idea how much I weigh. That's the problem with Gibbs free energy and enthalpy. We never actually know how much H or how much G anything ever has. We never know. We can only ever talk about the change in G or the change in H. But that's not true for entropy. For S, there's a point where I know exactly how much S a pure crystal example of a substance would have. When is that point? At zero Kelvin, and I know it has zero entropy at that point. Because I have that reference, I'm not just stuck talking about delta S's, I can actually talk about S, just plain old S. And if I add up all the S of all the products, and all the S of the reactants, and then do products minus reactants, I'll get the change in S for that reaction. I'm not able to do that for delta G and delta H, so we cheat. We invented something called formation reactions, and it turns out if we use the delta G's or delta H's of those formation reactions, we can do something very similar to what we're able to do with delta S, and it's just products minus reactants. But the only difference is that for, delta, or for entropy, again, we have a reference point, zero Kelvin, third law of thermodynamics, and that's why we can just use the actual absolute entropies and not these special formation reactions. So, but first part is these are just plug and chug, right? These are just easy ways to get delta G, delta H, or delta S for reaction. So, and it's plug and chug. So example on your handout here. So asks you to give delta H for this reaction. Cool, and it asks for delta H of this reaction. And what's given to you in the lovely table off to the side there is the delta H's of what? A formation in a table. What was the delta H of formation for PCl3 gas given as? Good, negative 288.07 kilojoules. What's the delta H of formation for HCl? Good, negative 92.30 kilojoules. Um, for pH3? 5.40 kilojoules. Notice it wasn't given for Cl2. And what you're supposed to remember is that Cl2's value is zero. And it turns out that the formation reaction for an element in its elemental standard state is zero. Not compounds, just elemental elements in their elemental form, their standard state. So if I had just put Cl2 liquid, well, that's not the standard state for chlorine. That would have had a number. If I would have just put Cl gas, no, 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 standard state for chlorine is diatomic. It has to be Cl2 gas. And that's when I know it's zero. Cool. If you look, this only applies to formation reactions. Does, if I was doing delta S calculations instead, would that actually have a zero for the S of Cl2 gas? No. When would Cl2 actually have an S, an entropy value of zero? Only if it's a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin. 
But elemental form means what's its standard state form at 25 degrees Celsius, not zero Kelvin. And so if we were doing the entropy calculation, we wouldn't have a value of zero here, but we're doing delta H. And the delta H's of formation are listed. The Cl2 wasn't given, but for the formation values, any element in its standard state, value of zero. So in this case, it's plug and chug, and it's products minus reactants. And so in this case, we're going to have negative 288.07 plus, you got to multiply by the coefficients, 3 times negative 92.3. Oop, I'm doing reactants minus products. That's not what I want. Let's try this again, products minus reactants. So 5.40 plus 3 times 0 minus negative 288.07 plus 3 times negative 92.3. Somebody get me the value for this? Five seventy point what? Cool. Plug and chug. Plug and chug. Now this is half the battle here. You should know, yeah, if you're given a bunch of delta G or delta H as a formation, or a bunch of entropies in a table for all the reactants and products, then you can just do plug and chug, products minus reactants. But the second half of this is you have to know what a formation reaction is. And I would treat it as a totally separate question. Notice we know how to plug and chug, and I can plug and chug and do the math without ever knowing exactly what one of these formation reactions is. But you should know exactly what a formation reaction is well, because you may get a question that says which of the following is a formation reaction, or which of the following is not a formation reaction. And so what you should know, first thing you should know is that formation reactions all form one mole of a single product. They always form one mole of a single product. And a formation reaction, your reactants are only elements, no compounds allowed, and they have to be in their, if I can spell standard, standard state. That's a formation reaction. One mole of a product, and the reactants are all elements only in their standard states. So if I wanted to do the heat of formation for HCl gas. That means that I need only one mole of HCl gas on the product side. And what elements will I have on the left? H and Cl. But they have to be in their standard state as well. What's the standard state for H? H2 is one of the seven diatomics. And what phase? Gas. gas. What about chlorine? Cl2, one of the seven diatomics as well, and also gas. What are the only two elements that are liquids in their standard state? Mercury and bromine, Br2. Those are the only two liquids. All the rest of the metals are solids. So, and then your only other gases are N2, so O2, F2, Cl2, and the noble gases. And everything else is solid. Cool. Carbon will be a little interesting case in a sec here. So let's say, what if I wanted to do this for something like a little more complex here? Sodium bicarbonate. I want to do the formation reaction for sodium bicarbonate. Question? Um, what is H2? Oh, uh, actually, you're right. I gotta do this. Why can't, if, what if I don't like fractions? Can I just double everything through? No, because it's only one. Good. I can't double everything through here, but thank you for reminding me to balance. I can't double it and make it two because then it wouldn't be a formation reaction anymore. So if there's fractions, you're stuck. You gotta keep those fractions. Let's do the same thing for sodium bicarbonate. How many elements make up sodium bicarbonate? So sodium, hydrogen, 
carbon, and O. Cool, what's the standard state for sodium being a metal and not being mercury? He's a solid. So hydrogen, we already said, was diatomic and gas. What about oxygen? We'll go there first. O2 gas, and what about carbon? Can't just say solid, it turns out. Turns out carbon has a couple of different allotropes. So carbon, graphite, and then one other one we don't even talk about. But which one's the standard state? Carbon is the form of graphite or carbon in the form of diamond? Graphite's actually the standard state. So you, you technically can't say just solid, although you know, sometimes in earlier chemistry, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of be nice because we don't want to tell the distinction. But this chapter is where they usually give you the distinction. And technically, we should be saying graphite, not just solid now. And that's one thing you should remember. And now we've got to balance this thing. So sodium's balanced. Sweet. How do I balance the hydrogens? Got to put a half. The carbon? Good. And the O2? Yeah, one and a half or three halves. Awesome. Cool. That's the formation reaction for sodium bicarbonate. So can one of you tell me what the delta H for this reaction here? What's the delta H for this reaction? Anybody give me the numerical value? Zero. It's not zero. It's not an element in its standard state. Well, here's the deal. That's what I wanted to hear. It's negative 92.3 kilojoules. How in the world did you know that? Did you just memorize all of them? No. Yeah, we used it in the last problem. That's the only way he knew this. In the last problem, we had the heat of formation of HCl. Well, we just made the formation reaction, and the delta H of that formation reaction could, you know, more commonly be called delta H of formation is negative 92.3 kilojoules. That's the only reason he knew it. If I asked you for the delta H of formation for sodium bicarbonate, I have no freaking clue, and you have no freaking clue, because, well, unless you are some weird person that memorized the entire table, but otherwise, we have no idea. But this one, we used it in the last example. Commonly, you'll get a question, again, on this concept of what a formation reaction is. Which of the following is a formation reaction? And if it has two moles of product, it's not a formation reaction. If there are compounds on the reactant side, that's not a formation reaction. If it's all elements, but they're not all standard states, that's not a formation reaction. The other way that question could be phrased, though, is it could say, for which of the following reactions would delta H of the reaction equal delta H of formation? And a lot of students see that question, and they have no idea what it means. Well, if for a certain reaction, delta H of that reaction equal delta H of formation, then what must be true? That reaction must be a formation reaction. That's what the question's really asking you. So again, if the question says, for which of the following is delta H of the reaction equal to delta H of formation, that's just another way of saying, which of the following reactions is a formation reaction? It sounds like you know, a totally different question, but that's what it means. And it throws a lot of students. But it's just another way of saying, which of the following is a formation reaction? Correct. So in delta H of reaction equals delta H of formation, that reaction must be a formation reaction. Question? So, yeah, so I'll just put standard states that are gases. You got your noble gases. I'm assuming you know what those are. So, but then you got N2, O2, F2, and Cl2. Oh, and let's not forget H2. Those are all gases as their standard state. Br2 and mercury are liquids, and everything else is a solid, or you got the funky one like carbon that's graphite. There are a couple other funky ones, but nothing you're likely to see.